I like buttons, the kind you can touch and feel with your fingers. But not all devices have buttons. The new Cintiqs, the 13 and the 16, those don't have any buttons on the face of them. The giant 27 inch Wacom Cintiq tablet, that doesn't have any buttons either. Instead, it comes with an express key remote. You can purchase that separately, or I think it comes with the 27 inch. It doesn't come with the smaller ones, but it costs an extra $100. $100 is a lot of money for a remote control. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy. This is a Joy-Con that comes with the Nintendo Switch, and I'm going to turn this into a remote control for drawing and illustration. When I am using my Surface Pro, I usually use like on screen buttons to supplement my drawing experience. It helps me go keyboard free in a lot of programs, but having real buttons would be great. On-screen buttons are good for what they do, but it's hard to rest your hand on them. You can't physically feel them. You have to look at them while you're drawing, and that, that kind of slows you down, because I the nice thing about having those physical buttons alongside of some of these tablets, like this Intuos Pro here, is that I can rest my hand on them. I can feel them. I know they're there. I can commit that to memory similar to keyboard shortcuts. Now the reason that we can turn this into a remote control for my Surface Pro is because it uses Bluetooth to connect to the Switch. In fact, we can use any video game controllers that connect via Bluetooth, like the new Xbox controllers or PlayStation 4 controllers. Those connect via Bluetooth as well. What I like about this is how comfortable it is to just hold in your hand and use. And if you have an old Wii controller sitting around, that holds really well in one hand, and you could use something like that too. So with these Donkey Kong Congas, which came with an old Wii game, I would love to test that out. If anybody has any of those Congas, go ahead and send them to the address over here. Don't worry about putting my name on it, I'll know they're for me. So all in all, the process for hooking all this up was much smoother than I expected it to be. On your Joy-Con, there's a little sync button along the side. When you hold it down for a few seconds, these green lights start flashing, and then you just go to the settings on your computer. You find your devices, go to Bluetooth, and then you pair it. Windows will eventually say that it's connected and you should be good. Just as a side note, those little pairing lights never stopped flashing for me even after it was connected, but it still worked fine. The next step once you've paired the controller with the computer is to actually tell the computer what buttons will do what. To do that, I am using an app on Windows called Joy2Key. It's pretty easy to use, it's free. All you have to do is go in there, press the button on the controller, and then set the shortcut key you want to that button. And when I was using the app, it said there were 32 buttons that I could program on this little guy, but spoilers, there's not. So what I've done is I've set undo to this little back trigger that sits on my finger, and I've set some of the more common tools to these four buttons along the face. So this way I can switch between my brush, I can switch back over to an eraser. If I wanna zoom in and out, I can press up and down on the joystick, and I can even change my brush sizes by pressing left and right. The other nice thing about Joy to Key is I can set different profiles. What this lets me do is if I jump into another program, like say Adobe Illustrator, I can set up different shortcuts specifically for that program. Getting things up and running on my Mac was pretty much the same exact process, just on the Mac. I started off by going to my Bluetooth settings, I pressed the little button along the side, I watched the little green lights blink, waited for it to discover it, and then I just paired the controller. When I wanted to map buttons to the controller, I tried out two separate apps and they both worked fairly well. The first is called Enjoyable. It's totally free, you can download it, link in the description. The downside about Enjoyable is you can only map one key press at a time. So if I wanted to do something like change my brush size or undo, something that requires me to hold down the command key while I am doing it, what I had to do was I mapped the command key to the back trigger button, and then I mapped like the Z key to a different button on the controller. The second one I took a look at is called Joystick Mapper. Is that right? That's right. It costs $5, you can find it in the Mac App Store. And the nice thing about Joystick Mapper is that you can actually map multiple keys to one button press, so that frees up some different buttons on the controller. I will say it's a little bit unintuitive as far as how you set up the controllers or whatnot, but once you figure it out, it's it's not too bad. So that was a fun little experiment. I had no idea that I could actually do that. So if you have any comments or questions, let me know down below, hit me up on Twitter. Also, I'd like to thank everybody who has supported me on Patreon, really appreciate it. Also, all the folks who have purchased my Procreate tutorial uh, that I posted last week, uh, that's been tremendous as well. That's all I've got for now. I'll see you guys in a couple of days.